Okay, this is just a short video in addition to the other videos I made for the board game Kokami. This one relates to cards. They've been referred to. I showed you the ones you can print off and make your own. They, these are the ones you can actually buy on Cult 3D. There is an extra action where you can uh, option where you can buy cards. I call this the Remix deck. I actually ordered originally five copies of the first deck, figuring, you know what? It's okay. It looks good. I got them. I needed to repair them. So I actually have five of these from the first draft that you can read them. A few words are cut off, you know, and I have one of these. So I might get more. When you get them, you have the option of buying this lovely little plastic deck. It's actually a very nice, or a deck box, sorry. It's a very nice deck box. Comes with descriptions on it. It's a 79 card deck. So you can take a look at it and uh, decide if you want all these cards. You can decide you only want two of some, some you have three of them. And I apologize for doing this all one-handed, but I literally can't find a uh, selfie stick holder. Yes, in today's world, people exist who can't find selfie stick holders. I uh, just moved to a new apartment, so I can't afford to buy one right now. So this is one of them. The Sachi White Tree is from a book cover, novel number five. In the actual novel, it was uh, Ellis, one of my main characters. She was standing in the middle of the tree, summoning fire, ice, wind, water. So this is one of them, Rock Dust. Weakened crevice creatures, one hit point for one turn, can be used to counter Born of Rock. Born of Rock, of course, will empower crevice creatures. You are allowed to draw so many cards per hand, as covered in the rule book. You therefore play them. There's your draw deck here, so let's actually put them all in the draw deck. Remember, this is the book that would sit on the corner of your open field, or it could sit beside your main field. So if you're just playing two people, you just use this one, or you could use this one. There are eight uh, game boards, remember? You can just put it beside it. There you go. Draw deck goes down. So, active card. This one only works for one turn. So it's going to be an active for one thing and then it's discarded. You can either put it in the brown pot, or if you're using the open field, you have an empty spot, you can discard one of them as your discard pile. The brown square works though for a discard pile. So I empower them, worked for one turn. So during my turn, I put it here. Then my turn, I discard it. It's my turn, may say a draw revive. And again, this half of a little silhouette is part of the last novels. Novel 20 and 21 had this as part of the, co the uh, cover. It was an internal illustration, but this was actually part of the cover as well. Return one destroyed game piece to active play. This one would be an automatic discard because once you use it, it's not going to remain active. Anything that remains active goes here, two at a time. I would suggest grabbing three of each. There is a limit in the rule book. It does cover exactly how many of each card you can use. Reload, ready net. So for ready net, Keep opponent from escaping an attack throughout through flight and or evade. Some of the characters on the game can evade an attack. They roll a certain number on a dice. They can avoid your attack. With this one, with the ready net, you can't. They, they can't escape your attack. Your attack is going to be doing it. So you put this one on there. It's active. When you use it, flip it up, and then it's discarded. Reload basically, let's redo that one again. Discard whole hand and draw a new cards equal in number. When you run out of cards, just uh, FYI, you have no more cards. So your play is therefore limited to what pieces you can move on your board and the, you know, the effects. If they're a whale or a sea creature, you're going to be able to have different water effects. The whale on a regular board is not going to have those effects. 
If you're an ogre on an undead game, which is actually this, this board right here is kind of half buried, then you've got extra effects. Every 10 turns, that 11th turn out following, those undead would have a different effect. But you would no longer have the cards. The cards, when you run out of them, you run out of them. So don't run out of your deck. Uh, depending, depending on your game level, you may want to use cards, you may not. These add in a little extra something to them. Uh, slot charger. Player can hold more, one more hand card in their hand because you're limited to how many you hold in your hand. So this would be an active card. It's going to continue on. There is no destroy card card, just so you know. Like in other games, you can't, uh, you know, a counter your activation is destroyed. No, this, this is not here. I put it there, you can't make me get rid of it. I could choose, though, to discard it. Sorry, I don't want that anymore. You can discard it. But no one can make you do it. Shuffle used cards back into play. So, to counter what I just said, if you have one of these, you can get your used cards back. But again, you run out of shuffle cards. You might want to have at least two of them, and you comes with the 79, 79 card deck comes with two cards. So you can reshuffle twice. This continues the game longer. When you use these though, strategy with cards, if you do it too early, if I use it right now, I'd get this many cards back. If there was nothing important in these, I wouldn't use it right away. Why would I keep it? I'd hold it in my hand. I'd wait till I had this many cards in here. These are worth shuffling back in. If there were like five or six really good ones here that I really wanted, they're, they're worth doing. That one I'd use a shuffle. You lose a shuffle card, then you get it back. Uh, could your strategy be that you use one at every time so you always have a shuffle coming? Yes. Will you survive that long? Is there a game that's gonna last that long that you will really need the deck continually? Well, maybe, actually. Please tell me if you come across that, because that would be awesome. That, that really would be awesome. Archers can fire and attack twice for one turn. If you really want to get rid of someone, archers have better range than some of the others. This could be effective. You know, uh, delay card. I'm sorry, I should put the camera over top while I'm looking. Uh, cast die. So let's look at uh, weaken origin creatures. Those are the ogres and their kin. One hit for one turn can be used to counter a dealer's charm. The dealer's charms, of course, right there can empower ogres in their creature, their kind. Burn. Burn causes one more hit damage, must be used in conjunction with flame powder. Flame powder, one of these other ones. But I can't find it. It's in here somewhere. Of course I can't find it because I'm looking for it. But, you know, some of these, that's the only one really. Uh, banish, let's take a look at Banish. Remove one dragon that was summoned by card, Flutes of Nerlinarion from the field. This one is kind of a counter card. Basically the flutes, and I know they're in here because they're one of my awesome, I love the Flutes of Nerlinarion. I love writing that into the novel series. Uh, Grosha did not enjoy it though, because Grosha is the one who got the flutes tattooed on his body. Oh, that's why I can't find them, because they're in the deck part I just discarded. There they are, right here, I can see the top of them. There you go, the flutes in Erlene Rion. Summons a dragon of your choice to a square on either your home board or the open field. Remember, the open field is the bigger one that allows eight boards to hook up to it. The dragon cannot attack for one turn, but then moves normally. So this actually is a bit of a cheat in a sense. You're not going to complain if you're playing and using it though, because you're allowed one dragon per team. Well, with summon with the flutes and Erlen Arion, you got two of them. 
you can ultimately end up with three dragons on your field. Uh, choose your dragons wisely, or just choose your favorites. They're all awesome. Sea Song, you know, like th there are different cards depending on what you want to do, right? Sea Song empowers all sea animals on current board, allotting them plus one attack point. And that's actually that's half the tree, and the other half the tree is this tree. So if I were to There you go, I had fun with my cards. There's there's the whole white tree. I took a list out of the tree though, because why not? Uh, read the book, it's on the cover, it's an awesome picture. I I, I like it. The author likes it. Milo size grace. Remove all effects from active pieces. So someone who is burned, they're frozen, they're moving, whatever. This will remove that. Uh, late night. Puts target piece to sleep for two turns. Cannot be attacked, move, nor, uh, nor attack. So you put them to sleep, you can't hurt them, but they're not going anywhere for two turns. So you pause them in their tracks and now you just carry on and maybe set up an attack for them for when they wake up. You know, some of them are sneaky, some are not. Each card has its use. If you look through the rule book, it lists off the different cards and their effects. Um, they're awesome. They're actually slick. Uh, you can kind of see by the sheen on them. They're basically poker card size. And like I say, they can come, you don't have to buy this plastic deck, but the decks are nice. Um, it hooks up in, Let's see if I can show you the hookup parts. They're nice and durable. Uh, they're bigger than they need be, but that means you could maybe put two decks in one, or if you thin this deck down, maybe put some dice on top of the decks on the cards. Sorry. And this is the card portion. Thank you.